Eleven Labs is the most popular AI voice model provider on the market, and they have just released their own AI agent creation playground. This means we can now build AI voice agents directly from Eleven Labs without any middleman providers. So in this video, I will dive straight into building an AI voice agent using their platform. So jumping right in, this right here is the Eleven Labs dashboard for building conversational agents. So you'll obviously typically know Eleven Labs for your voices, so you use 11 labs to get access to all different types of voices, whether the ones that are community uploaded, or you can also create your own voices. And that's all located at the top here of my screen in the create function. So you can get access to different voices, text-to-speech, and just generating a sort of MP3 files for voices. But the big new feature that they have released is the fact that we can now go ahead. And in this second section here, the conversational section is go ahead and start to build out some agents and these agents are like your typical chatbots and your typical voice agents that I've been building here on the channel is that we can now do this all on 11 labs and connect into the power of 11 labs and their voice models and build that directly into these voice agents. So to get access to this, all you need to do is just sign up for an 11 labs account. You don't need a paid account either. You can just sign straight in and you'll land on your sort of conversational AI agents page and you can get started. What I've got right here is one of the templates. So if you click the plus button, you can actually start off with one of their templates or you could just create your own, but you can just select a template from these options here, I've just clicked on the support agent and just load into this. So I'll just go through and demo this. So one of the first settings that we get jumping into this is ag agent language. So this is going to be using their Turbo V2 model. So if you're familiar with Retail or Vappy, we can choose between some of the 11 labs models connecting into it and obviously stays the same because this is 11 labs, of course. So click into all different types of languages. So we can obviously choose different languages for different sort of accents and how it's going to communicate in. I'll keep it at English for now, but obviously you can test that for whatever you need. The first message is the second box here. So the first message the agent will say, this is the same as all the other buildings of these agents. When you call up the agent or you get called by the agent, this is what it's going to say. So we can just type in whatever, keep it what they've got. Hi, I'm Eric. How can I help you today? And then it also says, if empty, the agent will wait for the user to start the conversation. So got a good setting there. We can just remove it and then essentially nothing is said and just waits for the user to start speaking. Now for the system prompt, the most important part of these agents, the thing that actually builds the entire context for the agent and the conversation to define what actually happens. This is all done here. In this case, this demo has said, you are a support agent named Eric. You are friendly and enthusiastic and really want to help the customer get the help they need. Answer in three to seven sentences in most cases. So obviously this is a pretty terrible prompt if you're going to be deploying this you wouldn't keep it this simple this is obviously not the best demo that they've got running here but it's a very basic thing that's just going to use your basic sort of chat gpt sort of just understanding to build a voice agent to give you an understanding of how it sounds uh, and how the speed is on this system but obviously if you've watched any of my other videos you'll know how to properly build a prompt that doesn't look like this but for the most part that's fine just for now we'll keep that there large language model so the next thing is going to be using an llm to obviously generate the responses so whilst 11 labs is purely just for voice models they don't have their own large language models so if we click in here we've got access to all of google's models which is and I. We've got access to OpenAI's models, which is GPT, and we've got access to Anthropics models, which are the Claude models. So we've got a good selection of models. This is pretty perfect for what you need. Um, I'll keep it on what the default is, so Gemini Flash, pretty quick model, so we'll just keep it there. Temperature, so this is to do with a large language model. I'll keep that on the default, but that's just the, the randomness of the responses. So typically, we won't need to play with that at the moment. Such a basic prompt. Next, limit token usage. I won't play around with this either. This is obviously just the input and output tokens and how much we want it to read out. They've got it set to three to seven sentences, which I'd say is probably quite a bit. You don't really want it to be speaking seven sentences for a response, but we'll see what happens when we test it out. Then below this, we've got the knowledge base. So we can add in some documents. We can add in files for it to get access to. So this is different to the prompts. In the prompt, we're just giving instructions. And then in the knowledge base, we're actually uploading company information, documents, uh, PDF files with multiple different pages. We'll upload that all in here. And that's great that they've got that option as well. Then next, we've got the tools. So if you're familiar with VAPI or you're familiar with retail, you'll have your tools or your functions. And this is all done here. This is your webhook response where you'll put in your request to an automation platform, whether that's Make or Zapier or your own custom endpoint, just put that in there and you can just do a typical API request to get information. So this is used for maybe appointment booking, for sending information to a CRM, sending emails, text messages, etc. You build all those automations in the webhook here and just connect it all through these settings. Then next, we've got this secrets tab and the secrets tab is purely just for securing your tool requests. So if you're making a request to a sort of locked endpoint, you don't want, it to be, it's not a public API, you want to get access to information that is private, you can just add a secret here and you can obviously hide hide those keys and hide those values. So the user on the front end can't actually get access to that in any way. The next part of these settings here is at the top, I've just swapped over to voice. So voice being 11 labs is like the main thing for this. And we can see here, we click into this and we're gonna get access to a whole heap of voices. So pretty much every voice uh, you can get on 11 labs is gonna be accessible here, of course. And you can just go through and select whatever. You can see here at the top, I've got my own voice because you can obviously upload your custom 11 labs voices. 
services as well. Now this is the same as Vapi and Retail and the other platforms you can obviously use 11 Labs and get access to all their voices. So there's nothing specific about that, but what I'm hoping is gonna be the big benefit of this is that it should be quicker. So the fact that connecting directly to 11 Labs, it should be much quicker. Next, we've got the text-to-speech output format. We'll just keep this as a default. I'm not gonna play around with this at the moment. Next, pronunciation for the dictionaries. This is great for getting specific words pronounced differently. So if you've got company names or just specific words that you want to pronounce differently, maybe that's like Walmart or Subway or whatever you wanna just pronounce a different way than what the AI model, uh, AI voice model is pronouncing, you can just type it in there and have it output differently. Next, we've got latency, so you can optimize how fast it's uh, speaking or how slow it's speaking, stability and similarity. So once again, if you're familiar with Vapi, you're familiar with retail, you'll know all these settings from 11 Labs being integrated, uh, but we can just change these values if we want it to sound more monotone, less monotone. We want it to be more expressive, less expressive. I um, mean, you just gotta play around with it because sometimes there's instabilities with the voice and sometimes there isn't. So uh, that's just those same values on the other platforms. Next, we've got the analysis tabs. Analysis, we're just looking at, I guess, evaluation criteria, data collection. So this is gonna be adding in some prompts to collect certain datas. So if we've got an objective to have a success for call booking, we would put in a prompt to catch that data collection. So if we want to capture emails, we want to capture, so if it's just numbers, we want to capture emails, phone numbers, names, first names, locations, addresses, etc. all through the data collection tab. I suppose we can just capture that using a prompt. Next tab is security. So this is something that I haven't actually seen before. We're able to actually require users to authenticate themselves before connecting to the agent and speaking to it. So that's pretty cool. We're able to essentially have this agent. Next, I've gone to the advanced tab. In the advanced tab, you just get a bunch more settings to do with the voice and configuring the voice settings. So the conversation duration, for the actual call. So if we want it to just end after 300 seconds, we can just have that happen. If we want the client events, so select the events that should be sent to the client, the audio interruption event must always be enabled. So events is sort of just like the VAPI end of call reports. So something happens, the call has, an agent has responded. We can have something happen. If the audio is interrupted, we can have something happen. That's just everything that's in the events tab. So it's very similar with all these settings to the other platforms that are out there because pretty much this is all just using the same tech. So this is why it's pretty similar. And then lastly, we've We've got the widget and so the widget here is where we're actually able to take our voice agent and deploy it on our website so this is pretty cool we're able to do this and deploy it on a website which is quite different to the other platforms they're mostly just focused on the phone number aspect of it but in this case we can actually deploy it to a website so if you want to have a voice agent as a web widget in the bottom right corner of your website you can actually do that quite easily using their widget section and so you can see here they've got an embed code so you just take this bit of code and put it on a website and it'll pretty much just put itself right on there feedback collection i guess you can just collect feedback through here so you're either during or end of conversation we can collect feedback on whether or not the call was good or was bad and just get some user feedbacks. So that's great as well. And we can obviously change the appearance. So we can change the colors, the text colors, button colors, all this, we can just customize it to look better for the website. We can change the variant for how it actually looks. So it's smaller, a bit bigger, and then obviously a bit bigger there as well. So we can change quite a few things about that. So that's pretty cool. Avatar, just change the profile picture. And we can change the text contents. So call to actions and things like that. We can add in different aspects to it. So that's pretty cool. We can just have that as customized as possible and shareable page. So we can add in just whatever in here. And then of course, we can connect a phone number to this agent as well. If we go over to the left here, go to the phone numbers tab. This is where we can add in a phone number, just the same as all the other platforms that are out there. We can click import a phone number, type in a label, and we can go ahead and select, obviously, country you're in, type the phone number, and you're just gonna type in your Twilio SID and Twilio authentication tokens right here, which is what you get from your Twilio account. Sign up for a Twilio account, buy the phone number, and then just use your authentication token. So this is the exact same process as Vapi for importing phone numbers. So now that I've gone through those settings for the agent, I'm just gonna go ahead and click the test AI agent at the top here and see how it sounds. Hi, I'm Eric, how can I help you today? Hey, Eric, how are you going today? I'm doing great, thanks for asking. I'm ready to help you with whatever you need today. What can I do for you? Can you count to 10 really quickly? Of course, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. How did I do? Anything else I can help you with? Yeah, that was great. Can you maybe tell me a joke? I'd love to. Why don't scientists trust atoms? because they make up everything. I hope that made you chuckle. Is there anything else I can help you with today? Can you act more like a salesperson and try to sell me a car maybe? Okay, I can try that. So, are you in the market for a new set of wheels? I can tell you about some amazing deals we have going on right now. We have a wide selection of cars, from sleek sedans to powerful SUVs, and we're sure to have something that fits your needs and budget. What kind of car are you looking for? I'm just looking maybe for an SUV. Great choice. SUVs are super popular right now. They're spacious, versatile, and can handle just about anything. Okay. Have you got any recommendations? Absolutely. We have a fantastic selection of SUVs. But to give you the best recommendations, I need to know a little more about what you're looking for. 
Are okay. you looking for Don't something? worry about it then. Don't worry about it. Have you, uh, can you try to book an appointment for me? No problem at all. I understand. I'm happy to help you book an appointment to make sure I get the right time slot for you. Can you tell me what kind of appointment you need? Is it for service, a test drive or something else? So there you have it. That is a really out of the box demo test of one of the templates that they have for the 11 lines voice agent. And that sounds really, really good. That's actually quite quick at responding as you saw there. And it sounds quite realistic as well. It's clearly got quite a good backend set up for the sort of pronunciation of words and the pronunciations of different emotions when speaking. That worked really quite well. And I'm sure that's just because of the fact that we can directly connect into 11 labs and we can actually get access to all these different nuances, connecting that right into the AI models and large language models that performed really well. So for the last part of this walkthrough, there's also the conversations tab on the left-hand side here. And this just tracks all of the conversations and calls and test calls that have been made. So you can just track everything that's happening. And you can just click into this and to see what happens. We can just look at the call that we just had here, get access to the call recording, get access to the summary transcription of what just happened. So this is exactly what I was just talking about. Tell me a joke, whatever, whatever translates all through here. If you want to learn more about building these AI voice agents, I recently released a sort of two hour masterclass covering everything there is to know about building these voice agents. And if you're a business owner, don't hesitate to schedule a call with me below and we can discuss your project.